Then the next slide, what I wanna do now is just take you a tour into focusing where has the FDI gone to, particularly in terms of sector uh, and, and uh, areas, that but more importantly, what, how many numbers of jobs have we actually created? Yeah. Have you got any information about uh, the other neighboring countries, uh, like Zambia, Mozambique, Botswana? Are they following the South African trend or are they? Yeah, so, so the countries that are following our trend in Southern Africa is Angola and Mozambique. Uh, they were, Angola was heavily oil uh, um, uh, dependent. So with the oil decline, you'll see that also impacted uh, Nigeria. That's why Nigeria is out of the sort of top five even. Uh, if you look at Mozambique, they had big uh, investment coming in to try and improve their ports and fishery. Unfortunately, it found their pockets uh, off into politicians and back off into Switzerland. So none of that actually stayed in the country, but guess what, they have to pay it back. So, so that's so Mozambique and Angola typically were the big drivers of Sudan brought that down. Botswana has remained pretty stable. So Botswana pretty stable, but it's very small compared to that. The other countries, Lesotho and Swaziland are pretty small to try and compare. But the other dominant Southern, it's typically your South Africa, Mozambique, Angola are the ones that influence that here. But the, all three of these are, have gone down. On. Great question. Yeah. Another question at the back? Um, just an observation that uh, the traditionally oil uh, resource rich nations are not really on your list, so it makes you realize that uh, resources are almost a curse because you have an over reliance per se. So, others have been forced to think out of the box and come up with uh, innovation. Good, you're actually stealing my thunder for the next slides, eh? But <laughs> very good observation, yeah, you're 100% right. So I'll, I'll show some stats that even further emphasize that, so we, we specifically focus, but that's really the story you will see today, that the traditional uh, sectors and things that attracted investment, commodities and extractives, have actually disappeared. So the big countries that you would, they used to be able to attract investment on the back of their, their being rich in minerals and resources, those are gone. Secondly, because remember those resources we were extracting, we were exporting them to the mature markets, Europe and so forth. Their economies are dead, so they don't need our gold and stuff anymore. So that's pretty much a sort of disappeared and platinum. So hence why you're seeing a big slaughter. Also, as I said, a lot with a new uh, digital uh, focus, a lot of industries and sectors are now functioning less and less on resources. It's other things that they should try. But let, let me get into the next few slides and you'll probably see some insights into the question that you actually asked. So if you look overall, as I said, we try and track projects and jobs and also the impact of company to company investment. So in total, over a 12 month period in 2018, 710 projects were executed on the continent by private companies. Okay? This is an important stat because we always want to believe and private sector is always getting hammered by governments that private sector is not doing enough to reinvest and actually do stuff. 710 projects, which far outstrips all the big projects that governments are busy banding out in there over a 12 month period. So a lot of, and, and think about it, these are jobs that were done, private company re expanding its plant, reinvesting and doing stuff to actually grow jobs. Hence why they had a, a direct impact of 170,000 jobs that we could track from that investment from a private company to a private company, it went into job creation. Mainly because the type of investment that happens amongst the peer company, company is the second level, which is more your uh, working capital. A lot of the equity investments typically comes in by shares and stays. The working capital investments typically then says, if I want to partner with you, I'm a US or European company, I want to partner with you and expand my market, working with you as a partner, we need to put that money into expanding your factory, expanding your production, which by default creates job creation. So the interesting lesson here is to then say, governments should refrain from putting out job creation stats and thinking that government is the only person that can create jobs. If anything, we've seen in our country, that's the worst thing you can do because you are creating jobs that aren't really producing any new output from that side, and over time, it becomes a burden. Private sector is where you are able to create a lot more jobs and much more uh, output producing uh, sort of type jobs. So if I was to, and I, I do a lot of conversations with government leaders that focus on improving your, your sub-sector policies, allowing private sector to grow, directing them where you can support them in terms of legislative and and framework for them to get on with doing the business of producing goods and services to provide and supply to customers. Because the Africa growth story still remains why we've got the youngest population globally. The average age in Kenya, can you guess what it is of the population of citizens of Kenya? Can anyone guess? I'll come back to your question, so it's not. 28, uh, I heard what, 17? You're probably the closest, it's actually 19. So more than 50% of the Kenya population age is just the average is 19. Now think about that. Those guys have got 30, 40 years working life ahead of them. 
But more importantly, they're about to hit their mid-20s, which is their biggest consumption age. Why? They get married, they buy a house, they buy a car, they take the kids to school, they do all the things that a normal family would do, which requires all these goods and services. Hence why, if you enable private sector to grow, you will see the GDP growth. So the Africa story remains the youth dividend, which is a blessing and a curse in my view, because if you're not create, able to create jobs fast enough, it becomes a time bomb. But that is what is attracting in private investment into the market they are looking at. And if you compare that to Europe, average age of Europe is about 55, 60 of most places, especially France. I mean, a lot of the guys are going towards retirement, five years left in them being, a lot of them because they're in retirement, they slow down their consumption. They're actually trading down, selling the big house, buying a smaller flat, uh, spending money more on travel than anything else. So we need them to travel, to come visit us more, to bring money, because they've got the capital. But that's the story. So you had a question at the back. Yes, sir. And it's, 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 a, it's, it's a small detail, and maybe because I'm not an economist. So uh, you, you speak about bilateral investments, which is country to country, which you haven't included. And then yes. you uh, speak about uh, direct investment, company to company. Yeah. But, but for example, the, the, the private companies that tender to government uh, tenders, so yes. for example, all the Italian money goes into the gas exploration in Mozambique now. And so, so that's company to government, I guess. Uh, yeah, so the big... Uh, the big is that counted in this or uh, yeah. excluded the highest So the, the big investment you're referring to, which is the Anadako investment, uh, that, that was a, a... It's a 10-year investment. Mm -hmm. So all that capital hasn't actually flowed. Um, and secondly, the, that investment, a lot of it was, one, buying up a majority of the shares. So the first year, definitely a lot of it won't be in our numbers because it's more the equity investments are not going to go into production. Year three and four, you will start to see it flow, flowing through because that's when they'll, because now they have to go and drill, build out the plant ring, do all that. But from year two and three, it will start coming to numbers because that cash is now being deployed as working capital. So if the cash comes in and just buys shares and stays, we don't count it. So, so you're right, the big investment in, in uh, Mozambique is not in there. The Chinese investment, those typically are directly bilateral because it's guaranteed by government and it's typically debt. Uh, from, from, from that perspective. So we do count debt, if, even if it's into the company, but a lot of it, if it's for working capital purposes, is really our proxy. Okay, but good question, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure, man. Um, in terms of the jobs that you've got in 170,000, is there a role of the social agents who have temporary jobs? Because obviously you're doing infrastructure, you've got that ramp up period, you've got a lot of temporary work. Right. And then also looking at, if you have the temporary work, how are the other people Going forward. Yeah, very great question. So because our measure exclude the large government or debt funded projects that typically are going into the big infrastructure of roads in that build, it's not included in these numbers. So that's the temporary jobs you're talking about. Our study measures, so these are jobs that were created and present for the full 12 months of 2018 with a focus of being in place for the next two to three years. So it's, it's largely permanent jobs. But after two, three years, who knows what can happen, but th things being equal, we expect those jobs to actually stay. So over the 12 month period, these were full 12 month jobs created with a focus of an additional 36 months being in place. The number would be much higher if I included those stats. And unfortunately, these are the stats that government typically counts because they look at these infra projects they're doing and add all those temp temporary jobs. So um, I thought you were going to ask why is the number so small? Okay, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. If I did, I'd probably be closer to 800,000 a million. Yeah, okay, but, but very good question.